Hello and welcome everybody back to the Insider Galaxy Podcast. I am your host, Eric Hernandez. As always, we got to talk about our 1-0 win against the Seattle Sounders. Finally, we beat the Seattle Sounders after who knows how long. Just It feels like forever at this point. But we finally beat the Seattle Sounders at home on a rainy day in Carson. You know, could, could we do it on a rainy day in Carson? I guess we did. We got the 1-0 win. Um, of course, Gabriel Peck gets his first goal. So we're going to talk about that, give our thoughts, our opinions about the games, you know, all the good stuff. Um, we also have Galaxy News, a signing that we have to discuss as well. That a signing is, is interesting now that we're going into the, you know, into April where the, the window closes as well. So we're going to talk about that signing. And of course, we have a preview of El Trafico this week. LA Galaxy, LAFC at BMO Stadium, the first of the season. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Obviously, all the shit talking and the shit housery has already begun online and everything. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that game as well. And, uh, yeah, should be a good episode. Should be a good conversation. Overall, we're glad you're here. And, of course, with me, as always, is LA Galaxy Central. How you doing, man? Doing all right. I'm feeling a little bit tired right now, but still happy to be here nonetheless. Yeah. Very tiring week uh, start to the week for sure, definitely. Um, it, it, today was a, a little bit hotter than usual, I guess, so that kind of also messed me up in a sense. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, not uh, 100% in a sense, but, uh, of course, we're going to be here. We're going to try to pr- push it through um, like the Galaxy. We're going to try to show some adversity here. But, um, yeah, of course, th- but still, though, yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're feeling. It is kind of a little slow day, a little tiring day. I feel you on that, but... Um, but that's always the beginning of the week, right? Once you reset um, and things like that. But anyways, enough about that. Of course, we got to talk about our game. Like I said, we beat the Seattle Sounders 1-0 at home with a goal by Gabriel Peck. The, his first of the season and the first with the LA Galaxy. Um, yeah, of course, a rainy day, a, a, a very a wet field, I guess you can say. A, a field that affected both teams. Um in a sense and yeah i mean of course it was a 1-0 win a very early goal a game where we basically grinded out the entire the whole almost the whole game base or the whole game really uh we grinded it out um we end up getting the three points maybe it wasn't it wasn't the flashiest of wins but you're not too disappointed getting a win especially against the seattle sounders at home um but yeah uh, a very a game where we had to grind it out and uh yeah i mean how, what were your thoughts about this game uh, how'd you feel about the Galaxy overall in this performance? Yeah, it was good to finally win. Obviously, we had an 11-game winless run versus the Sounders, so to get that out the way is finally really good. We finally managed to keep a clean sheet, too, which has definitely been a problem. Like we talked about, our defense has been pretty decent from open play this year, but when it came to set pieces and these sort of other mistakes, we, could, we would always concede goals. And, you know, to keep a clean sheet, I think, is definitely really good. It's a really positive sign. Like I said, after Nashville and St. Louis too, when we tied 2-2 and 3-3, I said the Galaxy need to be able to win games 1-0 or 2-1. They need to be able to get results, not only by scoring a lot of goals and having these great offensive performances and at home against a team we haven't had much success against. I think that's a really good win to get in difficult playing conditions too that I think affected both sides of the match. Yeah, I mean, definitely for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was a game where I think, you know, like I said earlier, it wasn't the flashiest of wins. But sometimes you don't need to be flashy to, to you know, get good results in a sense. And, and you know, like with, with the weather and everything like that, obviously it did play into, into an effect. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, like, sure, we weren't, I guess, the best offensively. But when you look at the defense-wise and how we played, how we contained the Seattle team who, you know, I, I mean, I guess still had pieces like Jordan Morris, like Rudy Diaz in that offense. And, yeah, they were – having some injuries, but some guys did come back into their lineup um, in this week. But yeah, I mean, overall, you got, you got to be at least happy about the result. Like sure. Could they have played better in a sense? Yeah. 100%. But yeah, I mean, of course getting the three points, which is something that I think, you know, the galaxy needed to get off their back, right? Cause they hadn't had a win at home yet, two ties. Um, and, and essentially they were just, you know, trying to get that win already and to get it against the Seattle Sounders to get it against, you know, even if they're not doing good right now, uh, at least the start of the season, that's still in a sense, a good team on paper. And, you know, to get that win is, is special for sure. Um, of course you got to see at least offensively, you got to see your three DPs connect again in a goal, um, with Gabriel Peck's, you know, finishing it off, which 
I mean, you should be happy about that, right? Like, I mean, that's that's exciting to see that three of your DPs have finally connected, um, or or at least are connecting to get to give you that production. Because think about it, you know, in years past, how many of of our DPs really connected the, in that sort of way? And you got to see it in two games, um, in a row. So, how, I mean, how, how, what were your thoughts? I mean, I mean, about the goal, I guess, in a sense, but more just the fact about the connection with Ricky Pouge, Paint still. And Gabriel Peck in that in that goal, and just in general, what it could lead into the season. Yes, yeah, so obviously that's great. All of our DP scored in the first month of the full season, which is really good. That's a very positive sign. Something you definitely couldn't say about past teams or other past players that were on this team. And yeah, they worked well. Like in Kansas City, they all had a good buildup that led to the third goal or the shot eventually that led to the Delgado tap in. And then today you had not today on uh, Saturday you had Ricky Pooch playing Pain Still, and then Pain Still kind of does a layoff to Peck. You know, Peck shoots it. You know, goalkeeper should probably do a lot better, but still, it's a good strike, especially with the wet surface. I think it was a good idea to strike that, made it difficult for the keeper, and you know, it went in. So that's a really good connection. We need to see more of it. Definitely, we need to see the DP start together too. But you know, the fact that in two starts together they've had two goal productions, I think that's a very positive sign going forward. It's it's positive for sure. Um, you know, to see that happen because I mean, when you think about it, last year, because like. You know, just for just as an example, obviously you had Chicharito injured, you know, in the beginning of the season, Douglas Costa wasn't, uh, you know, fully there until, you know, once Chicharito went down. But like you never saw the connection. You never saw like your three DPs getting you the production. Yes, one of them or one of the other gave you production here and there, but it was never together in, in like as a group. And I think seeing that between the three now and so early on. I, I that's a really good sign and a really good thing to look in the future and something that should really get everybody excited um for the, at least this season to see all to see that production um I, I mean when you look at this game obviously this was a game where again the, it, you're happy with the result but is there anything negative you would take away from this game or anything that you think the galaxy need to work on um when you saw this performance well, I will say we didn't deserve to win the game. Like, I think Seattle on the field was the better team that game. So you can just look at that game as a whole and say, like, yeah, we were not the better team that game. We just took our one chance we had in Seattle. I mean, you could tell they only have one open play goal this year throughout, like, five or six games, however many they played. And you can see why watching that game. They missed some, you know, big chances to possibly get the equalizer, or even possibly a winner if they were just more clinical. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, especially that Jordan Morris went in, like, in oh, yeah. towards the end of the game. Like, I don't know how that wasn't a goal. And yeah, I mean, I I think we're just very much lucky there that that game was not tied. But I mean, yeah, in a sense, you know, Seattle didn't play their best game either. Um, you know, they're they're just not at least right now in open play. They're just not playing as well. But I think also at least you're you're kind of also it's to kind of take it back to a positive note. I think you're kind of happy that at least the defense were able to contain it. The the defense didn't you know, do too many mistakes. And then just in general, the team didn't have any, you know, big mistakes. No, no like major turnovers or turnovers that really cost the, that could have cost the galaxy. I really think that Jordan Morris one was the best opportunity and should have been the opportunity to tie that game and to at least steal a point, um, you know, at the, you know, on Saturday, but still though, like, I think, you know, you gotta be at least a little bit more happy that the defense were, you know, you know, contained it, especially after Casares also went down in the beginning and Zavaleta again stepped up. So you're at least happy that, you know, even with a, a, an early change, they were able to contain themselves. So I think that's a, another good thing too. But going back again to negatives, I think the best, the biggest thing for me for the Galaxy was just opportunities or trying to create the opportunities because I, I think they, they, they struggled creating opportunities and whenever they had the opportunities, they never really... Um, took advantage of them. I, I remember one big one was out of, you know, right before the half ended where he had just this wide open area to take a shot. Just shoot the ball. Even if you don't make it or not, at least you take the opportunity, take the chance. And I think he gives it to Peck, or not Peck, uh, Payne still, Payne still, you know, squares it into the box. It leads to nothing. And then the half ends. But I, I think that was the major thing about, for me, with the Galaxy was just that they never really took advantage of the opportunities, nor went... They they kind of just did struggle on the opportunity as well. I don't know if you felt the same way uh, about that performance or at least the opportunity I will, part. 
I will say two things though. One, I mean, the playing surface was definitely not very good. Like that definitely did affect the way we wanted to play, especially with the midfield. Like when they were trying to connect passes, it was just a lot more difficult because the ball would move a certain way. Or if they tried to play it in the air, the ball would just stop at a certain point or it wouldn't get the lift they wanted. So that definitely limited us in creating chances. But I would also say uh, Seattle last season was the best defensive team in the league. They only let in 32 goals. And yeah, you can obviously say right now they're not starting off very well, but their defense is still the same defense last year that let in 32 goals. So it's kind of expected that opportunities are going to be limited. And even this year for the Sounders, all of their losses have been by one goal. They have had a lot of 1-1 ties. So in general, this team's not given up a lot of goals or a lot of chances. It's just on the other end, they're not scoring a lot. They only have one open play goal this entire year, like I said. So it's not that they're really like giving up a lot of opportunities. We weren't going into this game expecting that many opportunities, maybe compared to what we would get versus St. Louis or San Jose. I mean, this game was supposed to be closer. The Sounders usually don't let in that many goals. So the fact that like we still got that one and then, you know, got a little bit lucky in defense. We didn't concede, but still did a good enough job not to concede, I think is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely. I mean, grinding it out, like, you know, grinding out this game, it wasn't a bad thing either. Like, I think, you know, there's going to be those games where you're going to have to grind it out and there's going to be those games where... Again, you might not give your best performance, but if you get a result, you know, that says a lot about your team. And I think this is another instance another instance of that where the Galaxy may have not had their best performance. Yes, you can, you know, take the weather and the field into account or whatever, but um or at just any other, you know, things, but still though, just maybe not playing your best and still getting a result is a good thing. And you gotta do it at home in front of your fans. They they were itching for the win. Of of course me and you were trying to you know, see that win at home and they got it at home in, in front of, you know, I think it was like 22,000 people, which is a pretty good turnout for, you know, a rain game. Right. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's good to see as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not bad to get, to get that, gr to grind it out a bit. And, you know, especially against a team like Seattle. And I will say another thing about the field though, too, as well. I felt like the galaxy in the beginning you know sort of found a way to play better with with the wet field obviously affected both teams in a sense and, and it disrupted the game or at least for the players but like i think the galaxy did look at least a little better moving or passing the ball with the with the the wet field and things like that but still though regardless uh you're you're happy about that and um of course is there a lot of things that can be you know better sure um but you're still happy about getting that result in, at the end of the day um you want to talk about players, or do you have any other points before we move on? No, I think that would pretty much do it for the game. All right, then let's talk about players. Uh, let's start off with the defense. Of course, you had uh, you had McCarthy at goal. You have Mickey Yamane. You started off with Maya Yoshida, and then uh, Martin Cáceres. Cáceres goes down um, early in the game. Zavaleta goes in later on, and then for your left back, you had uh, Julian Aude, um, you know, starting as well. So again. How'd you feel about the defense? They finally get their first clean sheet of the season, but overall, how'd you feel about the defense and their performance? Yeah, the center backs were really solid. I think they did a really good job. They kept Rui Diaz in check, a player that's gave the Galaxy a lot of problems in the past. And it was kind of interesting too with the Sounders, like they subbed off Rui Diaz at like the 78th or 77th minute when they were down one goal. Like that's just kind of crazy to think like, yeah, we're down one goal. Let's sub off our DP number nine, who's been really good against this team in the past. Like that was kind of, you know, a bit crazy, but like, I guess that's what they had to do. So the center backs did a good job. The fullbacks were a bit questionable. I think Aude, you know, again, it's like, I don't know, just wasn't very convincing to me. You know, made some mistakes. I think was the shakiest player in that back line. Yamane had a few moments there, but also, like, I don't think he was great necessarily. I think, like, they did get a bit lucky, the fullbacks, to have not been taken advantage more of because of Seattle's attack. What? But this upcoming week, that could be more of a problem if the fullbacks aren't good. So I think the fullbacks, you know, did okay. The center backs did good. McCarthy did fine. Although I will say with McCarthy, though, his distribution does need to get a lot better. Like, I feel like every time he was passing the ball, it would just go to the other team or just out of bounds. He needs to get a lot better in that area. But other than that, I feel like it was, it was decent defensively. I won't say it was great, but it was pretty solid for the most part. Yeah, I, I'd agree. It was solid. Um, yeah, I think the center backs really, I, I don't want to say carried, but they definitely were the bright spots of the, of the game. I will say for, for Julian now that I, I don't think he was great defensively, but he was a little bit better offensively. I think he did help a little bit, um, in a sense, but I, I think, yeah, for the most part was still a bit shaky defensively. Uh, Mickey Yamana was okay for me in my, in, in a sense, but uh, again, I will say with the injury, of of Martin Casas, which I hope is not a big injury. We will hopefully there's an update on him 
um, whenever this episode releases or whatever. But hopefully it's nothing too drastic. Um, but still, though, with Martin going down and, and Davaletta going in and stepping up again is a good thing. And I think for the, like, sure, it wasn't their best def- defensive performance, but they still held it together. They still found a way to not make big mistakes either. So I will say that it, it is an improvement for the defense, but still could be a lot better, definitely, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, John McCarthy, I think that was another thing as well, the distribution, you know, of him, which is a, a problem with Bond as well. Whenever we had him on the team, it was the distribution. And, yeah, I mean, definitely, like, there was a lot of moments where it just went out of bounds or just, you know, just, out, just you know, the ball just went out of nowhere and, you know, really wasn't, wasn't help at all. But, yeah, I mean, definitely could use a lot of help or not a lot of help, but at least better uh, from John McCarthy. But overall, I think that the... the the defense was solid, you know, decent to solid. Um, so, yeah, I, I would agree on that as well uh, for the defense. Um, any other thing about the defense you want to talk about? Yeah, no set-piece goals. That's nice, isn't it? Especially with the Sounders who have scored a lot of set-piece goals on us before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no set-piece goals. And I think that was another thing that got got people kind of ner- nervous in this game was like whenever there was a corner or a free kick, it was just like, all right, let's just not concede, Especially you know, on a set-piece. Especially corner kicks. I think that's really where we, we really struggle because free kicks, not so much. I think we do a good job when it comes to like setting up the wall and stuff like that. But yeah, for, uh, corner kicks is really where we don't have, uh, you know, good, good uh, defending. So yeah, that was that. that that's a good thing, though, too. Uh, no set piece goals. So that that is a, you know, an improvement as well. Um all right then. Uh, let's go into the let's go into the midfield now. Uh, you had Gaston Brugman finally starting in this game. You had Ricky Puj. You had Mark Delgado. You had the three guys finally starting in the game. Um, the connection, of course, we've talked about it before. They all have a good connection. The chemistry is there. Um, yeah, I mean, what were your thoughts about them finally being on the field together, um, or at least starting together? How how'd you feel about their performance together? Yeah, it's good to have him back, obviously. I don't think it was their best game. Like, I think out of everyone on the field, the midfielders were, from both sides were affected by the field the most by far because the way you're trying to pass, the way you're trying to move, it just makes your job that much more difficult. So I just feel like on either side, the midfields weren't that great. But, you know, they did what they could. They did good enough to not let so many attacks go through them. So they had some moments they did all right. But, you know, they could definitely pay, play better for sure. And hopefully that can happen on a better playing surface. Yeah, I think really the playing surface was the reason why it wasn't as, you know, I guess wasn't the the best performance that they had. I will say Gaston, you know, starting, he did pretty good in my opinion. Um, It's still, you know, being his first start. And it's good that we got to see him start now, right before this game coming up, which is, again, you know, something that we've, you know, I guess we said this going into this game. Like, if he doesn't start, um, you know, against Seattle, it's like there's probably not a, a good chance that he would start against LAFC. You know, maybe he will this this uh this Saturday now that he got a start in against Seattle and you know slowly you know building him back into the squad. But I mean yeah for the most part the midfield just probably wasn't as effective in this game because of the the playing surface and because of the wet grass and everything. And yeah, I mean I I think in overall they they were okay though. I think, you know, of course Ricky did had the connection and you know started up the play for the goals. So, I mean, there was that for, from Ricky, but yeah, I mean for for the most part the midfield, you know, was okay. I I guess, you know, wasn't the best, but it was definitely um you know, good to see those three guys uh starting together in in the, in the midfield. So that that is something good to see. Um any other points about the midfield? Or uh no, not really. All right then. Uh, let's talk about the the offense now. Uh, offense: You had Gabriel Peck, you had uh, Joseph Payne still, and you had Miguel Berry in in the start of this game because Jovalich had a knock um, during the week. He didn't get the start. Comes in later in the game, but uh, you had Miguel Berry, which was going to be interesting. What once I saw Miguel Berry in the starting lineup, I was like, all right, this is going to be interesting because this will probably you know, this will, it'll it'll be an interesting conversation once we got into this podcast because obviously we have our thoughts about Miguel Berry and of course let's see what he can do in the starting lineup. How how difference does that make? And um, yeah, I mean overall, how'd you feel about the offense? What were your what were your thoughts? Um, yeah, you know, overall, 
I mean, a good first five minutes, right? We had a chance like one minute in to score. Joseph Pencil hit the post, which was a great find from Gaston Brugman. Really used the surface well, so that was a good chance. And then Gabriel Peck scored, and then that was one zero early on. You were happy about that. But then for the other 85 minutes plus stoppage time, just very, very dry, not very inspiring, not really much going on through the offense. Again, a lack of chance creation, which came from our midfield. Our midfield wasn't really getting the ball forward, which kind of made our offense slow. I don't think we used Joseph Payne still enough. We should have tried to find him more, which is another big discussion probably. Uh, Gabriel Peck played extremely well. Definitely man of the match. Best player on the field on either side. Really put in the effort. Really just was, was making everything happen. He played really well. And Miguel Berry, I mean, I don't know why you would say the conversation's interesting. There's nothing interesting about it. I mean, he's just not going to be a backup caliber striker for this team. That's not his role. That's not what he was here to do. He's Preston Judd 2.0. Just the energy occasional maybe gets playing time, but not very often either. Like on most teams, you know, only scored like one MLS goal or two MLS goals in the last two seasons in like, what, 30 plus appearances. So he's not really been doing anything. He's not going to do much here. And we definitely do need a backup caliber striker for sure. Like I still think we do. We still have a little bit of cap space available, which I don't know if we're going to do it before April because the window's pretty closely coming to an end, but we still have the summer window. We can see what we can do there. But yeah, overall good first five minutes, but the rest of the game, the offense was just, you know, not really that engaged in the match. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you you said it spot on. And for, a little, I mean, I'm going to start with Gabriel Peck, of course, because he, yeah, like you said, he was the man of the match, gets the goal and, and really just gave that effort um, throughout the whole 90 minutes. And I think, you know, just seeing that, um, you know, seeing, you know, Gabriel Peck actually, you know, you know, trying and, and seeing him be more comfortable with the team in inside the league. I think that's, you know, a good thing to see, even though the, I guess you can say the offense in general as a whole probably wasn't the best either, um, you know, for the whole, you know, at least after those first five minutes. But yeah, I mean, of course, I think Gabriel Peck played good. Joe, Joseph Painslow, he had that one opportunity where, you know, again, I, I don't know how that wasn't a goal either. I mean, he that probably should have been a goal. But again, playing surface probably played an effect to that. But, yeah, I mean, Joseph Faint, so, you know, he played, you know, I guess okay. And then Miguel Berry, I think, you know, for being a big guy, he gets pushed around a lot. I mean, <laughs> I mean, let, let's be, let's, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I will say, you know, I, I, I prefer Miguel Berry coming off the bench, you know, in those, like, final 10 minutes. But, again, that's not really saying much either. But still, though, I mean, seeing him start, I mean, just, yeah, wasn't it. Definitely for sure. Um, you know, being outplayed, being outbodied sometimes looked like a headless chicken just running around and just kind of finding just you know trying to find his positioning which he couldn't really find it at all and yeah i mean of course i mean i don't disagree with the fact that you know you you're gonna probably gonna have to find another you know striker at least you know a back a good backup striker and yeah i mean i think this game sort of proved that that you know you know if jovalic again goes out or whatever the case may be um you know, you're not going to be that confident with Miguel Berry, um, you know, being your, your guy up top. But, I mean, I will say, though, it, it, even then, at least, you know, your three DPs will, will uh, you know, will probably take over or at least give you that production. But, I mean, still, though, um, you got to have at least, a you know, a decent number nine to, to get you even more production. So, yeah, I mean, Miguel Berry wasn't it. Um, and, yeah, Gabriel Peck was just really the the bright spot of that offense uh, for the, the even – past the, those those early five minutes yeah look Miguel Berry hasn't been it for the last three seasons like he was really good in Columbus in 2021 well not even really good just decent I think he had like seven or eight goals people thought like he was this interesting prospect and then he gets traded to DC United because Kucho Hernandez was coming into Columbus then on DC he scores like one goal and starts almost every single game he was really bad for them get then he gets traded to Atlanta United only has one goal for them and a large amount of appearances too so and then Miguel Berry, I think he's either got waived or he's out of contract. Then Galaxy picked him up on waivers. And, uh, you know, it's like, I don't want to talk down to him, but he's just not an MLS backup caliber striker. He doesn't have the quality of what it takes. A backup caliber striker for this team would be like, that's not a DP. is like Christian Ramirez on Columbus or Joseph Martinez. Like, that's the type of guy we need. Hell, even Billy Sharp, if we had him right now, what, he scored six goals last season with all those shit players on the field giving him service? It's like... You know, even if we brought Billy Sharp back right now for one more year, he could probably do a lot more with the players we have on the field right now on the wings and with Ricky Pooch. So it's like, yeah, we need another guy in there. I don't think Miguel Berry is a backup caliber guy. He's kind of like that Judd third stringer. But it'll be interesting to see if we do that, you know, in the next two weeks, which is probably not very likely or maybe in the summertime. But I do think it's something that definitely needs to be addressed. 
Oh yeah, definitely. It has to, it's going to be addressed. I don't think it, you know, it should or it, it or they need to think about it. It has to be addressed. I mean, and, you could think about it, I guess, if you're Will Koons. I mean, you could believe in him like you believed in Jovalich when it wasn't easy to, but I mean, I don't know. I just think you have to inevitably address it. Well, yeah, that's true, I guess. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I guess it is a process. And yeah, like, you know, we're not here to talk talk down on him even though you know, we, we, we sometimes maybe we, we do look like look like it, but we don't. Like, you know, we're trying to, you know, we want to see him do the best because obviously he's on the team. You know, he's a Galaxy player. We want to see everybody do good and contribute in some sort of way. But, I mean, just in this performance in general, like, if Jovalich goes down at some point again, which hopefully that's not the case, you know, at all this season, but, um, you know, you're not too confident with Miguel Berry. Um, you know, I guess being the guy, you know, after him. So, yeah, I think obviously you're going to have to address that um, at some point. And, you know, I mean, maybe it does get addressed within these next two weeks. Who knows? But, I mean, again, I, I mean, in a sense, I guess, you know, maybe it's not the main thing you got to worry about right now. So maybe that's why it doesn't, it doesn't get addressed these next two weeks. But you never know. I mean, Will Koontz isn't afraid to pull the trigger on anything. I mean, we've seen that during the off season, We've seen that during the preseason. And even – during the, during the just the regular season, so like I mean, he's not afraid to pull the trigger on anything. So who knows what happens, um, you know, these next couple of weeks. But that'll that'll definitely um, be interesting for sure. Um, but anyways, uh, subs. Uh, how'd you feel about the subs coming in? Uh, I think obviously, you, you know, we had Zavaleta come in, we had Diego Fundundes come in, Jovalich came on in the second half, um, and I'm trying to think who else came on. But I mean, subs. I mean, that didn't really do anything much. Um, to, to affect the game, but any, anything on the subs that you have uh, any points on? I mean, I would say Zavaleta did affect the game. Like, he had to play a lot of minutes, and he was an impactful sub that definitely helped and, you know, stepped up again, which is really good to see. And, yeah, I think Jovalich coming on for Miguel Berry was a welcoming side. I think that's something you wanted to see after the way Miguel Berry was just getting pushed around and not making any sort of impact on the game. And Edwin Cedillo coming in for Brugman makes a lot of sense. Like, I think Brugman was a little bit tired, and he did a good job, but... It was probably time to make that change, and it's really good to have a guy like Edwin Cedillo coming off the bench who knows the players, who's gotten a lot of starts, who starts on winning teams before like he did in FC Dallas. He knows how to play in this league, so that's a really good guy to bring on too who can help close out the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we've talked about uh, Brugman and Cedillo. Just that the fact is, is like whether you start one or the other, it's it's really good to see one of those guys come off the bench. It's like, you know, regardless of, of who starts, it's like, yeah, that's a good good thing to see right and uh yeah i mean obviously the the most impactful sub was zavaleta stepping it up for you know when martin got got down but yeah i mean zavaleta just you know again stepping it up i mean that's a good thing to see see as well especially with the center back depth being thin right now or at least was thin um of course we'll talk about that i mean still is i mean you could probably get one more um in there but but definitely for sure like it was a lot thinner than it was today um that's for sure right so uh but regardless yeah it's good to see him step up in there um especially with you know how how we've talked about him before and how we've criticized him before it's good to see him um you know step up and contribute so yeah i mean for for overall i think the subs were okay you know again um not too much impact but you know it is what it is at the end of the day um but all right I, i guess that was some players um you know, any other points you want to take from the game before we move on or, you know, any final thoughts? I mean, I have two more points. One, I would argue, actually argue the subs were actually pretty good. Like, I'd say they were better than okay. I think the subs made a lot of sense. I think taking Brugman out at the right time was a good sub by Vanny. And I think putting in Zavaleta, knowing that he could step up, was also a good sub. Getting Jovalich out for struggling Miguel Berry was a good sub. And getting Diego Fagunas on for a tired pencil was a good sub. So I'd say they were better than okay. I'd actually argue they were pretty good subs. All right, yeah, no, I mean, valid. I mean, the, the, I mean, I will say that it's like, you know, kind of a, a sign of how your depth, how the depth is with the team. But I'm just saying it wasn't impactful because we didn't get like a second goal or anything like that. Or like the Galaxy didn't like, you know, look different drastically. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to say that the, that the, the subs were terrible. I mean, they weren't. I mean, they were good subs. But just in general, I'm saying like, did were they a bigger impact? Like, I mean, no. I mean, we still not, no. got a... You know, it was still a one zero one zero game at the end. That's what I'm trying to say. But I do agree. Like, I mean, they were the right subs. They were the right decisions. And I think, you know, uh, for the most part, I think it, it tells you a little bit about the the depth of this team and how the, how we're able to switch these players and, and and you know with the players coming in. So I think that it gives you more of that 
um, if you know what I mean. Yeah, my last point was not only was Gabriel Peck good, I think he was head and shoulders above everybody else. Like he was clearly the best player on the field 100%. on either side. Like it wasn't even close at all with the way he was defending, taking on players, dribbling. His dribbling was really good. His passing was good. It looked like it wasn't. He wasn't only the best player. He was by far the best player of that game. Oh, one hundred percent. He was the best player. He was the man of the match of that game. Like definitely one hundred percent. And you know everybody was talking about him. It was like how. Or at least like during like the media reports and everything, it was just like, oh, how, how, you know, how, are you, how was he able to do it? It's just like, you know what? I just, you know, I'm, I'm balling out, you know, like I'm just, you know, enough. like he really took on the challenge, no matter what the circumstances were against the Seattle team, against a wet, you know, playing on a wet surface. It's like he really took the challenge and. Yeah, I mean, he, he looked great. Like, I mean, he, it, it's good to see that you're, even when your other DPs may not be playing the best, at least one of them is going to step up. You know what I mean? It's not the, it's not the fact of, oh, it's like if this guy doesn't uh, step up, like then we're screwed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not that sense that you get anymore. It's like, okay, like sure, maybe one DP might not have a great game, but you at least know the other one's going to step up and, and give you some production. So again, it's a good thing to see. Um, from all three of these DPs that you're going to get some form of production um, at the end of the day. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, any other final thoughts about the game before we move on? I mean, the streak is finally over, right? 11 games. Last win was in September 2018. One winner to the last 17 games versus the Sounders. Like, at this point, I don't care how it comes. It's just over now. Like, thank (laughs) God, right? Yeah, I mean, thank God. Like, I mean, it's been a long time. I mean, it's... I mean, not even Slatan got a win with with Seattle, and the, like he got that, one. that puts. Um, oh, you said twenty eighteen, right? Okay, so yeah, he got he got one, but even then, like there was still a moment where Slatan didn't get a win with against the Seattle team. So it's like it's not like you know it, he was like always uh you know different when he played against Seattle. You know what I mean? So it's like like even even when you put into that perspective, it's not like he always beat Seattle. So it's like. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm glad to see that streak finally end. I mean, shit. Like, I mean, I, I know technically we beat them last year in the Open Cup, but that didn't count for crap. Like, I mean, that was their second team. That was their uh, MLS Next Pro team. It's like, you know, that didn't really count. But to finally get them against at least most of their starters against, you know, the Seattle team, I think that that's, you know, again, a good thing to see. Finally, it's over. But, um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, that was Seattle. Uh, 1-0 uh, win with Gabriel Peck scoring. Uh, again, a grinded out match where again you're you're happy with the result no matter how I guess the team performed or at least you know even though it wasn't their best performance but yeah we get that and after that result first place in the Western Conference so at least you're, you're that's another thing too also first place in the Supporter Shield standing so at least you know as of right now like I know a lot of people were like you know what just end the season right now just you know start the playoffs let's let's <laughs> let's start it right now but no I, I mean still it's good to see that uh, at least we're in those positions right now because I, I don't know. It's like, did you ever feel like we were going to be in this type of position where we were going to be competing, I guess? I know it's still early on, but at least, you know, in the conversation of being, you know, first place in the West or, you know, in the support shield standings, did you feel like that was going to be a possibility this year? At this point right now, absolutely not. Like, I thought we could be competitive or we could have a good season. I, I don't know. My ceiling was kind of all over the place. Like, I thought this team could, you know, do good, have some moments, but also do bad, have lapses. But, yeah, to be first place right now, to be first in the supporters' shield standings, I mean, I don't know how realistic that is for the entire year or if that's going to happen. I mean, I'd love for it to happen, but I don't know. Like, in a, in a year where, like, you have a lot of new pieces in, it could happen, it could not. But even this early on, to be in a good position right now, to, you know, to play well, get a lot of points early on, I think is definitely a positive sign to start off a season. And we've always seen with Galaxy teams in the past, whenever they get off to a good start, they usually have a better course of a season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and the, and the beginning of the season is always important because, like, if you get those early points, you know, you have, you know, leverage, room to work with and things like that. So during the season, you know, so, yeah, get, getting the, getting these points and, you know, being undefeated, at least right now, it's, you know, it's a good thing um, to see uh, from this galaxy and hopefully it continues. I mean, obviously we don't want it to stop, but you know, realistically, you know, it, you know, at some point it could stop or anything like that. But I mean, that's, that's another thing too. Cause like being on top in the Western conference and in sports show standings, like that puts a big target on your head. Cause now we're looking at this as like, no matter how, like, you know, until we lose the, every next game is going to be the big possibility of being, I guess, like the first loss or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really saying this well, but yeah. You know, but the point is, it's like you know, right now it's just really good to see, and you know that we do have a big target on our head. I guess now, early on in the season, 
and uh you know and lafc is looking at that at that target you know coming this saturday but uh but before we get into lafc let's talk a little bit about some galaxy news we did get a signing though uh you know this week we did get some center back depth something that we did uh you know want to see the team address uh galaxy are signing colombian center back uh carlos emiro Gaceres, I believe it's what uh, is how I'm saying his name right, on loan from Deportivo Pereira uh, with an option to buy, of course, this 22-year-old, 68 appearances. Um, I haven't seen a lot of film on him. I haven't had the chance or any or seen any statistics about him. But, of course, seeing center backs and getting some more center back depth is good to see because, uh, of course, Jalen Neal is still out. We just saw Martin Caceres go down, and who knows how well that's going to be. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're we're get, we're building more center back depth. Uh, how how do you feel about how do you feel about the signing? And I don't know if you got to see you know any film on him or anything like that. But how do you feel about it? Yeah, so first of all, I did watch film on him, and I was very impressed. He's a very good passer out the back, which I was very impressed with. It seems like a player that's a really good fit for our playing style. And you said center back depth. Well, I'm not even sure he's going to be center back depth. Like, I really believe this can be a starting level option next to Maya Yoshida. Like, Maya Yoshida, yeah, I respect him. He's going to be our starting center back the whole year if he's healthy. He's our captain in the back line. He should be a starting center back for us. But next to him, that spot is so wide open. Like, think about it. You have Casades, who's 36 years old. He's coming off an injury last season, getting another injury right now. He's not going to play throughout the course of a whole season. Zavaleta, yes, it's good he's stepping up right now. It's a cool story, but like, let's be realistic. Is it sustainable throughout the course of a whole season? Probably not, so that spot's still open. And Jalen Neal, like, I don't know. I'm just not seeing it right now. Like, He picked up three setbacks for his injuries. He's been out since August. We don't know when he's going to come back. I think he told Total Galaxy like he'll be back in two weeks. But I don't know what back means, like back in the gym, back on the field, back playing games. I mean, back can mean so many different things. Like, we don't even know what that means yet. And considering there's no videos of him, like, training or, you know, working out right now, I don't even know where he's at right now. So that spot could be wide open for him. It's the first center back Will Kuntz has gotten to transfer in. Obviously, he signed Maya Yoshida last summer, but now is the chance for him to actually bring in a center back that he signed internationally in. I think he signed that for a reason. It's not a U22 DP contract, which is extremely good. I'm very happy about that. It's not even a TAM deal, which is good. It seems like a really good deal. And honestly, like I think he's going to be a starter for us. And then you look at it the way the back line is. You have, you know, young player with Julian Aude. Then you have an old experienced player with Maya Yoshida. You have young player with Garces. And then you have experienced player with Yamane and experienced player with McCarthy. You have a 2-3 combination in the back line. Two young, three experienced, which I think is really good. So... Honestly, I don't even think it's depth. I really think this could be a starting level option, but we have to see what he can offer when he's in the team. Yeah, I mean, definitely. That was that was a topic that I think a lot of people brought up is that he could be a starting caliber player. And I think just with the things that you mentioned, right, um, he's a young player. Uh, I don't think he qualified for the U22 spot because he's turning 23 this year. I think that's the reason why he didn't qualify for that. But even then, at least you don't waste that spot. So I think that is a good thing as well. Um but still, though, like, yeah, I mean, you could he could be a, a, a starting spot. Obviously, we've got to see what he does. But again, just like you mentioned, the balance between youth and experience, again, Aude being one of those guys, um, again, Jalen Neal, when he gets back, hopefully, and again, who knows when that is, because that just seems like that's up in the air. And I think the Galaxy are just going to take their time with Jalen Neal, at least, at least it's what it looks like, right? But um, still, though, yeah, I mean, this could be a good, uh, you know, a, a, a good starting piece if, if he can be um, but even if he doesn't you know again you still address the depth part of the center backs where where again anything could happen somebody could get injured somebody might go on international duty or whatever the case may be um, but yeah I mean I, I like the signing I like that we address the center back position again and you know who knows what more they do to that position because you can argue that they could go for somebody else as well but um, yeah, I mean, to get a young player, um, someone with a, with a good amount of experience, I mean, 68 appearances, uh, I mean, that that's good, right, to see at a young age. So, yeah, I mean, of course, he's had he's had his chances, and I think this is a good signing for the Galaxy and something that definitely needed to be addressed, and we're glad that he's coming here. I mean, let's talk about Jalen Neal, though, because for me, at least, like, I think some Galaxy fans this year are, like, a year ahead of schedule, and I'm a year behind. Like, some Galaxy fans think this year that he's going to come back healthy, he's going to start for the team, he's going to be like he was early on last year, which, by the way, last year, I do think some people kind of, you know, overhyped him a little bit, not, like, in a bad way, but, like, kind of thought he, he was better than he was. And I don't know, I don't think he's going to get back to that level this year that he was even at the beginning of last year. Like, think about it. He's injured right now. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know when he's going to play. Let's say in two weeks, Jalen Neal 
uh, starts going back to the gym again. Okay, he's working out. Then he has to work out for like, you know, another three to four weeks. And then it's like May. And then he starts training again for another two to three weeks. It's like, you know, middle to end of May. Then, okay, he can start making appearances come June. But then come June, like the rest of the league is super fit. And then he's not really that fit. So he's not going to start. I think this year, Jalen Neal is going to play a lot of games for Ventura County once he's healthy. Not as like a bad thing, but just as a way to get fit and really get back into things because MLS is going to be at a higher pace. And then even if Jalen Neal gets those games with Ventura County, he looks good. I just don't think physically he's going to be able to handle MLS. Like Greg Van talked about that Jalen Neal this offseason because of his injury was not even able to work out, I believe. It wasn't be able to do many activities. So that's a problem in itself. And I don't know. I just think that this year for Jalen Neal is kind of a recovery year. We're like, yeah, he'll go through this kind of longer process. The Gavs are going to take their time with them. And they're really going to take their time with him because he got like major setbacks multiple times. So the last thing you want is like a fourth setback happening. So they're going to be slow with him. He's going to have to ramp up his pace probably at Ventura County. Then by the time he'd be like fully ready to go, it's going to be like just too late. The Gavs are going to have too much going forward. And it's going to be a complete team where he's not in it this year. I think this offseason is a big one for Jalen Neal where he can get really in shape, not have another injury, can work out, and then really come back next year challenging for a starting spot, especially when you consider Yoshida will be a year older next year. I think he can, he can possibly really start next year. But for me, at least this year, Jalen Neal is kind of out the window. Like, I don't think he's going to really be a part of the Galaxy this year. I don't know what you think, but that's just kind of my take on it with his injury. I mean, with, with Jalen Neal, like, I just think they're going to take their time with him. Like, he is still a young player. He is still someone who I think has a high ceiling, right? I mean, again, um, despite, I, I mean, I guess your, the opinions on Jalen Neal, he was still playing good last year. He still made the U.S. men's national team and was a starter for them at, you know, during that Gold Cup run, right? So, I, I mean, still though, like when you when you look at things like that, like the ceiling's still high for Jalen Neal. So, yeah, I don't think rushing him is the best idea. I think I agree that this could be a recovery year for Jalen Neal where, yeah, I, I think, you know, when he starts playing again, he's probably going to go with Ventura County, which, again, is not a bad thing. You know, just get him his reps, get him his, his you know, get him used to playing again on, 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 a, on a field. And, yeah, I mean, for Jalen Neal, I don't see the likelihood of him just being this big impact. I know I said that in the beginning of the season. I was like, oh, once Jalen Neal's healthy, who knows what this defense looks like. But at least right now, it's like, you know, it's like we're, we're getting – I mean, honestly, I think we've already been past the six to eight weeks that was projected, right? So, you know, I mean, at this point, it's like I just don't see them rushing Jalen Neal, especially when I don't think defense has been that big of an issue. Yes, set-piece defense has been bad, but at least an open play, like that that hasn't been a big issue for the Galaxy. And, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a point of rushing him, and which makes this signing with, with, uh, with, with Gacetis much better because it's like, you know, like you're getting someone who's experienced, you're getting someone who's going to maybe not easily fit with the galaxy, but at least, you know, it, it, after a few starts, he's going to find a way, find a rhythm. And I think, you know, again, like for Jalen Neal, it's just right now, it's not, we shouldn't be rushing him. I just think that the idea of him rushing him and thinking he's going to be a big major piece into the season, I would agree that it is not the right decision. I think they should just try to, you know, let him recover. And that's not a bad thing if he, if he has a setback year. Especially because he's a young player, too, like you talked about. There's still plenty of time for Jalen Neal to be a first-team player in this team, you know, get his value up, get European interest. There's still plenty of time for that to get back into the USA picture. But this year, yeah, it just feels like more of a recovery year, too. And the fact that Jalen Neal hasn't even been able to work out, really, from what I've heard, is kind of concerning, too. Like, you know, even last year, like, yes, I do agree his passing was really good and the timing of his tackles were really good. I do think, as an athlete, he does kind of struggle in MLS. Like, think about it. He is kind of skinny, so, like, you put him against, like, a big strong striker like Benteke I think you know the strength difference can be a big problem or you put him against that fast pacey striker like Rui Diaz when he's on his game like that can be a problem to his speed so I just feel like you know as an athlete Jalen Neal needs to get stronger he needs to use this year to get back in the gym once he's healthy have a really good offseason this year get reps of Ventura County towards the end get himself playing on the field again and then next year Jalen Neal can be a big part of our team especially as Yoshida ages another year Jalen Neal has another really good offseason he's healthy then I think it's a big year and he's still a young player plenty of time to develop his value but the idea of Jalen Neal being a key part of the galaxy this year I just don't think is realistic with all the injuries and setbacks he's had 
Yeah, I mean, I don't see it either. But again, who knows? Like, obviously, everybody's body is different. But at least just what we're seeing right now doesn't seem like it. And and again, it's not a bad thing if this is a recovery year. And and you talk about Maya Yoshida being a year older, and 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 got, and also you, you want to throw in Casas. I think their contracts end this year or after this season. So who knows if they're, they're even gonna be here next year? So there's still a big chance of Jalen Neal being, you know, a guy for for the Galaxy and for the future. So. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's no, to me, there's just no point of rushing it. Again, he's still young. He's still a player with it, with a, with a high ceiling in in my opinion. And yeah, I mean, even, even if it takes a year for him to recover, like, I mean, again, I'd rather have him have the setback than to rush him and then, you know, maybe possibly even ruin his career or hurt his career. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no point of doing that to a young player. I think that would be just be poor development from the team. If that was, if that was a thing, um, but yeah, I mean, I I would agree that I don't think Jalen Neal would be, you know, a big picture this season. Um, but again, that makes this signing a lot better. That means we're we're getting, you know, again, not just depth, but also a possible starting position or starting player with with this position. So I mean, we'll just see what happens with uh with you know with Garcetis. But yeah, I mean, it is it is a good signing to see, definitely for sure. I will say with Garces, though, when I was watching the videos on him, I really liked his passing ability because one thing next to Yoshida that I noticed was a really big issue was our passing out of the back. Like, I feel like a lot of times we would just launch it forward. Like, Casadas, he would launch it forward. Zavaleta would head it forward or launch it forward. And one thing I feel like we'd be very successful at with our center backs is playing through the midfield, like finding Gaston Brugman, finding Mark Delgado, maybe finding the fullbacks, finding a pass instead of always launching it forward. And whoever has been next to Yoshida has always just kind of played it forward and it's been kind of, you know, a little bit out of control sometimes. I feel like with Garcetis, like, he could find Gaston Brugman. He could find our midfield. Maybe he can find the wingers if they check in. I feel like we need a really good passer next to Mario Yoshida and Garces from what I'm seeing on video has a lot of good passing ability is really good with his feet too. So I feel like, you know, Will Koontz brought him in for a reason, right? Will Koontz is not a guy who's just going to bring whoever in just to fill in a spot. Like if he's going to bring in a young player on loan, it's going to be for a reason. It's going to be to impact the team. So, I mean, I kind of want to see him start. I want to see what he can offer. I'm excited for the signing and hopefully he can make a big impact here. And then we bring him back for next year. Yeah, of course, because there is that that option to even purchase, uh, you know, to buy him. So, I mean, who knows? Like uh, anything could happen, um, uh, with Garces. But yeah, I mean, it, it. Yeah, it's a good signing for sure. Uh, with you know bringing him in and and you know I got to see more film on him because I haven't seen or actually I haven't even seen any film on him. So just why I'm kind of lying there. But um, yeah, I just got to see how how he plays there. Um, you know, and see how 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 impactful he could be with the galaxy. But at least from what you're saying, you know. You know that that's that's good things to hear, definitely for sure. But uh, yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was one signing. Of course, that was some Galaxy news. Uh, we did want to talk about a little bit about the academy because I guess they did um, finish both the U fifteens, U seventeen um, teams finished the top of their group in the Generation Cup. Um, they'll be going to the round of sixteen for that. For that, so and again, we talked about it last week with about you know the academy and Ventura County, you know, playing good. But again, it is good to see uh, our academy performing well um, at the at the uh, Adidas Generation Cup, which is a very important tournament. Um, you know, I didn't get a chance to see any of those games, but uh, I don't know if you did or not. But it is good to see that they're, that they're performing good, and as well as Ventura County, I believe uh, they beat uh, Tacoma. Uh, you know, on Sunday as well. So it is good to see. Um, I don't know if you had any thoughts about uh, a little bit about the academy on the run. Yeah, I would love for them to win the Adidas Cup. That'd be a really big deal. A trophy back to LA Galaxy is a trophy back to LA Galaxy. That's how I think of it. No matter what level of fat it's at, no matter if it's like one of the academy teams, whatever age group, if it's Ventura County, if it's LA Galaxy, if it's any competition, a trophy back to LA Galaxy is a trophy back to LA Galaxy. So seeing them win the Adidas Cup would be great. I really hope one of the teams do it. If not both of them, that would just be incredible. But yeah, we got to wish them luck. Hopefully they do well. The tournament is still continuing. They're still advancing. They're moving on. They're playing well. So hopefully they can keep it up and possibly bring the trophy back home again. They brought an MLS Next Cup U17 trophy back obviously we celebrated it at the rose bowl it was a very good time everyone enjoyed it so to see another trophy come back i think would be a really big deal and hopefully something we can achieve yeah uh i just don't know when their next game is do you do you know by any chance the the, I mean, for I the generation it up. It, it's on the mls website but yeah i know they're playing like you know these next couple of days for sure yeah definitely um Where's the where's the tournament even being held at? I know they usually do it in Dallas, or I think they did the last one in Dal in Dallas. Or I might be thinking about the MLS next 
uh, cup, actually. No, never yeah, mind. Scratch that. that. I don't actually. Yeah, I don't know where they're hel- holding this tournament, anyways. I need to do more information. It. We're a, we're a Galaxy podcast, and and I don't know this information, so I need a need a need help on that. I mean, uh, I'm not great at well, it either, obviously, but I know it's in Florida. I know it's in the state of Florida for sure. Or at least I'm like ninety five percent sure on that. I could be wrong. I could always be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's in Florida. Yeah. If if anybody in the once this uploads, put it in the comment section. Do it. Do what you need to do to help us here. But again, uh, hope hope good luck to the academies. Hopefully they do good as well because, like you said, a trophy a trophy is a trophy, and and you know back to LA Galaxy. You know that's just only going to help them and you know, just even the future uh, of the academies and things like that. Right. So yeah, hopefully they do well uh, in the round of 16s, but um, yeah, that's it for some galaxy news. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Uh, So we'll just move on into our preview of El Trafico, uh, LA galaxy versus LAFC. Uh, The first one of this season uh, will be at BMO stadium. Um, Of course, you know, the galaxy are coming in undefeated into BMO um and lafc right now you know maybe not the best that they are right now but it is a rivalry game anything can happen in rivalry games and and of course for the la galaxy playing at bmo is not an easy uh thing to do they've only had two wins in there and one of them was during covid with no fans and one of them was against their second slash third team so again tough place to play for the galaxy and of course, we know what El Traficos are like. They're going to be high scoring. They're going to be close and entertaining all around. But uh, yeah, I mean, how do you feel like going into this game against LAFC? What are your thoughts about it? Uh, very interested for sure. Like you said, LAFC has been kind of up and down this season. They've been really good at home this year. They have two home wins out of three games, but on the road, they've been really bad. So, I mean, the future El Trafico is we have two more where LAFC is on the road, one at the Rose Bowl, one at Dignity Health Sports Park. So that could be interesting if their road form doesn't improve. But for this one, their road form doesn't matter because they're coming back at home. Where last home game, they won 5-0, which was really good. Obviously, Nashville was missing some players and they got a man sent off. But still, they're going to feel confident coming back home. They're obviously going to want to give us our first loss for sure. We have that target on our back and they're going to say, hey, we want to knock them down a little bit it's going to be a tough game for sure like I think this is a game where the fullbacks have to be really good like last week and maybe the last couple weeks the fullbacks have gotten away with you know not great performances this is one of those games where they'll have to be really good because with Buanga and Oliveira if the fullbacks just aren't engaged and aren't defending well they're going to get burnt and they're going to score a lot of goals on us and that's going to be a problem and obviously I think for the DPs we talked about it like yeah like sometimes they step up like sometimes one has a good game the other doesn't another one plays well the other might not play as well but for a rivalry game I think all three DPs have to be like yo like we need to show up we need to play really well for this game especially on the road there's probably going to be a good amount of Galaxy fans there a lot of people are into the team I'm still trying to go I'm not sure if I'm going to go yet I might possibly go we'll see about that but yeah the energy will be there the passion will be there on both sides it's going to be a very intense game LAFC is a really good team at home just in general it's going to be a tough game but we'll see what happens I I feel like we could do some things we have some good offensive pieces obviously Ricky Pooch has played well versus LAFC it's an opponent he always gets up for our wingers played well like we saw Pencil play well in our first rivalry game so we'll see if it continues there's a lot of interesting factors to it I think we could do well but I don't know, like, if we got a tie from this game, I feel like that would be a good tie. Like, I talk about ties sometimes, they're not the best results. But a tie away from home when you have the next two derbies, you know, technically as home games for you, I think is a good starting point for sure if we can manage to get a result from that game. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough game. And you also mentioned about, you know, possibly going. I mean, yeah, it's tough. A lot of people are trying to go. Obviously, you know, people signed up for it. Not everybody did. So it's very rare that anybody even got tickets to it but i know a lot of people are really trying to go to this game so i hope you know hope for the best for them i'll probably just be home watching this one but anyways um yeah i mean it's gonna be a tough game i mean for sure um when you just look at lafc at home the atmosphere um again the big target on our back is just they're gonna want to really you know give us the you know let them be their first loss you know this season and i think you know, again, there's a lot of things that are going up against the Galaxy on this that they're not favored. Again, being at LAFC and things like that. Um, but again, I, I think with the team, at least there is still some hope with the fact of, you know, they've already did things that we never thought they would. I mean, you saw Greg Vanny finally beating Peter Vermees a couple weeks ago. You finally saw, um, you know, uh, even in that Kansas City game, they were they got conceded first. They managed to win the game, something that we haven't seen. Um, we finally beat Seattle. You know, that's another thing that we haven't seen in a while. So it's like, you know, I think they're still going to be riding that momentum and they're going to be more motivated than ever going into this game. 
But again, I mean, LAFC, you know, that's always going to be a big trouble. They're always going to find a way to keep the game close. It's very rare that, uh, you know, these ever become blowouts. In fact, I think there's really been only one blowout where they, you know, beat us at, in Orlando for, you know, during the COVID year. But um, yeah, it's very rare that this team, that this game becomes, you know, you know, one sided. It's always going to be a close game. And, you know, being at being at their place, it's going to be difficult. But yeah, I mean, everybody's going to have to step up in this game, you know. And and also, you mentioned you mentioned three DPs needing to step up, and Ricky, you know, being a, a player who steps on the step ups in these type of games. Think about Dejan as well. You know, he's always been the player who who steps up in in these uh, El Trafico. So you know, he's going to be a factor as well in this game. So if he doesn't have a good game, you know, who knows what happens there? But um, yeah, I mean, going to be a difficult one. But again, I think the team is going to be more motivated than ever, and. Yeah, I mean, we'll just see what happens. I mean, I don't know. Anything could happen in this game. I, You know, anything could, could be a possibility for, for this game this Saturday. You'd probably take a point, wouldn't you? Like, you'd be happy with that, right? I would. I would I'd probably be happy with a point. I mean, again, points are points. Even if it's just one, they're always going to they're always gonna help you at the end of the day. But, Especially um, on the road, too. Yeah. But, I mean, also the fan in me and the and the rivalry inside of me just wants to win no matter what, you know? Beating a rival is always going to be the main thing. Like I mean, I don't want I don't want to see them tie. But you know, again, realistically, if they do, you know, it wouldn't be a bad bad thing either. But I mean, I want to see the win. But you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But um, I will say though, I think the main thing about the Galaxy Two is they got to contain Buwanga. And I think the uh, thing about Buwanga is that uh, you know, the Galaxy have had good instances where they contain him. Like I mean, if you looked at it last year, I think. When Caligari at least was here, you know, he would contain him very well. And he, you know, even when Caligari got injured, I forget who was, uh, I mean, I think I guess Cuevas was already the right back at that point. You know, it, it, you know, there was, there's moments where we can shut down Bawanga and we can shut down their best players. So if we shut down their best players, I think we're going to have, a, a, you know, at least a, a good chance, but I don't know if that's going to be the winning factor, deciding factor, but, I, I, but at least, you know, I think containing Bawanga is going to be the main thing as well. Um, you know, it, you know, at least when it comes to LAFC trying to win this game. I mean, for me though, it's all about the DPs, right? I'm like, yo, guys, all three of you guys, please show up. Like, please play really well. Joseph Painso, play like you did in San Jose. Ricky Pooch, play like you did in San Jose. Gabriel Pike, play like you did in Seattle. Yovlich, play like you did in Kansas City. Like, I just want our big players to show up in this game. That's what we need. And if our big players show up, I feel like they can definitely make a big impact on this game because they're that level where they're capable of changing the outcome of any given game. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, I mean, it's gonna take it's gonna take all of them. It's not, you know, when it comes to these type of games, it's gonna take everybody. It's not gonna be just one guy, um, you know, taking over. And again, like, it's very if it, if you're gonna have to rely on one guy, whether it's Ricky or or Paint still or whoever it may be, you know, I don't think the Galaxy are gonna have a good chance. So I, I think it has to be a, a a whole team effort and try to to you know go for this win again this is this is an important rivalry for them obviously every player knows what's at stake well at least most of the players i guess you know for peck and paint still this is going to be their first one so they don't really know what the what the vibe is for this type of game but at least they know it's a rivalry game and they've played in rivalry games before so they know how important those are um and and essentially yeah i mean it's going to take everybody i I really think it's going to take everybody in this one um I, I mean, honestly, I'm looking at this game offensively. I think, you know, again, when it comes to El Traficos, I don't think, I think defense is out the window for both teams. It's very rare that it, it becomes very low scoring in a sense. So I think to me, like if the offense manages, finds a way to, you know, keep producing, keep scoring, I think that's going to be the outcome in my opinion. Because uh, to me, I think I just defense for me in these type of games just go out the window. I, I don't know if you agree on that or not, but, you know, at least for me, that's how it is. It's been that way before, yeah. I mean, you never know what the future is going to be like, but it's definitely shown in the past, like, yeah, defense cannot always be there the whole game. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, any other points you want to talk about, LAFC, before we move on? Uh, big test for sure, big test. Everybody needs to show up. The fans need to show up. The players need to show up and put in a good effort, you know, try to get three points, just get a result too would be good. Yeah, it's going to be an intense game, very back and forth, and hopefully we come out on top. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but any any result, I think, would be a good result in in this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm nervously excited because again, I'm excited because of of how this team has been playing. But I'm nervous because it is a rivalry game, and with the big target on our back, it's just like, 
I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I'd be prepared if, if we lose that game. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't agree with the target, though. Like, every team, you know, in a rivalry game has a lot of stakes and understand what it means, though. Like, I don't think our record really changes anything. Like, there's been times where LAFC has come in with a good record, too, and we still came in and matched the intensity. Like, they're going to match it no matter what. If we had a loss, a win, no matter what, no matter what our record was. Like, I just think these games are very back and forth, and throughout the world of football, these rivalries between any teams at any level can be very back and forth. I don't think it's a matter of our start or our finish or what we've done in the past. It's just about that game and that moment, and that's really much it. Yeah, true. I mean, yeah, I mean, nothing else matters until, you know, uh, until you're on that pitch, right? And and the and the, the ref blows his whistle. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you did before. It doesn't matter what you do after. It's what you do in that game right then and there, right? So, yeah, I mean that that yeah, that I mean that's those are rivalry games, you know. That that's how they are. Anything could happen like I always say. So, yeah, I mean again, I hope hopefully it's just a good game. Hopefully we we find some sort of result, but uh yeah, I mean I'm still nervously excited for this game for sure. Um oh. Were you going to say no. something? No. Oh, that's my bad. I thought you were going to say something. Um but yeah, but of course, uh LA Galaxy, LAFC this weekend uh el trafico at bmo stadium i think this will be both on fox and apple tv so for those who don't have apple tv you're able to watch it on just normal normal television so uh you don't have to illegally stream the the games anymore so <laughs> there you go but uh yeah uh that's gonna be this saturday and um yeah i mean any other thoughts you want to say about the about the game or should we close it out I mean, hopefully I can go, right? Because I didn't get the free away tickets, unfortunately. I did apply for them like five minutes after they came out. I didn't get them. I'm still trying to go to the game, possibly buy a ticket. So we'll see if I make it. But yeah, if I do make it, obviously I'll be passionate like everybody else. Hope to see a good performance, a good effort, see everybody show up. And yeah, hopefully we can get something out of the game. Yeah, hopefully we do. And hopefully you do get, go to that game because obviously I think, uh, you know, being in those type of games are fun. You know, it's fun to go watch them and uh, but yeah, but I'll be at home watching that game. But uh, yeah, I mean, let's just hope for the best, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for the episode. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for watching and listening. Uh, if you want to follow me on you know social media, follow me at Entire Galaxy on IG, on X. Go follow the Galaxy Central on IG. And um, yeah, we can't thank you guys enough for watching and listening. Anything you want to say to the viewers and listeners before we go? That'll do it. All right, then let's move it on now. Um, be a friend, tell a friend about the podcast, wherever, whenever you're listening to this podcast. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, rest of your night. And uh, yeah, let's just hope for the best this weekend. Thank you guys. And cheese up. Seven words.